What's up everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna talk about images. Now images are obviously crucially important to any application. As soon as you open any app, you'll notice that there are profile pictures, there are background images, there are images all over an app, and images really do help make your app look good. So it's important, obviously, to know how we can add images to our Xcode project, and also how we can customize these images. So I'll show you guys how we can change the shape, we can make them circular or rectangular, how we can change their size to make them bigger or smaller, and then of course change our aspect ratio so we can really customize how we want our images to look. So a lot of what we're gonna do in this video is very similar to what we did in the last video, and that's because in the last video we did system icons, and both the icons as well as the images in this video use the same image component in Swift UI. So a lot of the modifiers are the same. I'm gonna repeat some things that I said in the last video, but overall, both the icons and the images are used obviously everywhere in applications. So it is really important to make sure that we are comfortable and understand how we can shape and resize our images. All right, so I'm back once again in our Xcode project. And like we always do, let's create a new file for the code in this video. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift UI view and this will be images. So let's call it image bootcamp. Click the resume on the canvas just to make sure everything's all connected and let's start coding. So in the last video we covered system icons and those are super convenient because the system icons are built into Xcode. We didn't actually have to get any image files. But images are not preloaded into Xcode so we actually need to get images and then load them into Xcode before we can use them. So I actually have two images on my desktop here. You can use any images you have, it doesn't really matter. But all you need to do is open up the assets.xc assets file. And in this file I've mentioned before, we can put our custom colors. We can also put all of our images. So I'm just going to very simply highlight my images and click and drag them into this bar on the left side of the assets folder. Now it's important to note the name of these images. This one is called Google and this one is called the dash rock. And we can change these here. So if I did, if I wanted to get rid of this dash, I could just do the rock. Uh, but we need to know the exact name here because we need to type in this name in our code. So let's start with this one, the rock. And I'm gonna go back into image bootcamp. And all we need to do is call image, just like we did with the system icons, except instead of calling the system name, we're just going to call name, this one right here, this first one. And it's looking for a string. So let's create a string by adding quotes. And then within the string, between the quotes, let's just add the name of our image. So the rock. Now it's not, it's not loading for some reason. We might need to, to clean and rebuild. So I'm going to press Command Shift K to clean the build folder. We could also click Product and click Clean Build Folder. And then we'll just try to connect again. So this the preview here will get paused. So let's just resume it. And now everything's compiling correctly. And we can see our image. I have an image of the rock here. Uh, load onto the device. Now, of course, you'll notice that it's way too big for our phone. Although he looks great in this size, he is a giant man. But let's make him a little smaller. So just like we did with the icons, we can call dot resizable. And now he will resize to the frame that we have on the image. So let's set a frame. Let's call dot frame. And let's set the width of uh, maybe 300, height of 200, and alignment we don't need, so let's just delete that. And now we can use the aspect ratio to fix our image sizing. So let's call dot aspect ratio, and let's start with fill. And again, fill is going to maximize the image so that it takes up the entire frame, but it also might go over the edges. So you can see here the frame is this blue line, and then the image is extending past. And if we ever want to clip to the frame, we can call just dot clipped. And this is probably the most common combination doing aspect ratio of fill 
and clipped. But of course we could do fit instead. And fit will keep the ratio of the original image, but make sure that it automatically stays within the bounds. And we don't need the clipped if we're using fit because it's automatically within the bounds anyway. So just like I mentioned in the last video, instead of calling aspect ratio, we can also just call dot scale to fit. And it will do the same thing. And we can call dot scaled to fill. So a lot of the times when you have images in your app, you're going to want to fill the image to whatever frame you're working in, but you don't really want square images. It's kind of rare to see a square image in an app. So although clipped works to fit the frame, it still gives us a square image and that's not very common. So what we can do instead of calling dot clipped, we can just call it dot corner radius and we can set a corner radius uh, of maybe 30. So now our image has nice corners. Now one method of making a circle that people often use is if you have a frame with specific height and width, so width of 300 and a height of 300, uh, then you can set the corner radius to half of one of the dimensions, so 150, and you have a nice circle in your view. This is one way to do a circle, however, it is not the most convenient. I just wanted to show you uh, manually how you could get this to happen. But if we put this width back to 300 and this height to 200, and we commented out the corner radius, so we're back to our square image, we can use a really cool feature called dot clip shape. And this is where our previous shapes video is coming into play. So we can clip an image to the size of any shape automatically. So right now we have a circle. I'm going to put the circle on another line. And we can put any shape in here. We can do dot uh, rounded rectangle. We can do, uh, what else is there? Ellipse. And you can do all these shapes and cool things with this. And this clip shape is super handy because almost all the time in apps when you have like profile pictures, uh, it's a circle. And now the last thing I want to show you guys is how to make an image into an icon so that you can change the color of it. So what I'm going to do is comment out this clip shape here. So let's put the two backslashes. Uh, so we're back to our rectangular image. And I'm going to use the other image that I uploaded. So in my assets.xc assets, I uploaded a Google image. So I'm just going to type in Google. And it will load. Let's make this scale to fit. And now let's try to change the color of it. We can call dot foreground color and dot red. Uh, of course, it's not going to change color though. And that's because we have not uh, told the system that this is going to be a template icon that we can change the color of. So all we have to do to get it to actually change colors is before we call resizable, let's just call dot rendering mode and we will change it to template. And this will basically just make this image a template image, which kind of will give it a single flat color that we can change. Now I want to note here that the reason this works is because this image, this Google image, uh, has a transparent background. There is no background to this image. Uh, if I had uploaded an image that had a solid white background, the whole thing would default to one color. So it only works with transparent background images. Uh, but once you call template, you can then change the color of your custom icons to whatever you want, uh, and it will change automatically. One final thing I'll note here is that it could get annoying to have to call rendering mode.template every time we want to use this icon in our app. So instead of calling it in our code directly, we can go to the assets.xc assets folder, go to this image, open the inspector on the right side, and just change the render as from default to template. And that will do the exact same thing. So when we go back into our image and let's clean and rebuild, so command shift K, again, that's just the product clean build folder and then resume the canvas. 
we can see that our image is now in template mode, but we didn't have to put that line in our code. So that's it for this video. You guys now know how to upload your own images, your own icons, how to scale them, how to resize them, and then clip them to specific shapes if you need. So as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.